Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Saeed Ali Mardan Admi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will learn some basics about polar coordinates in polar integral and then we will learn how we can evaluate a polar integral with the help of a question from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. Now, a polar coordinate is a system which is used to locate a point in two dimension plane. A point in polar coordinate is represented by R and theta, where R is a distance from the origin to the point and theta is the angle measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. So in two dimension plane, if it is a point P whose polar coordinates are R and theta, then the value of R is calculated by the distance of this point from the origin and theta is measured as counterclockwise angle with positive x-axis. Next, these are the transformation equations which provide us the relationship between polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates, x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. And conversely, we also have the relation for the reverse process, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, and theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x. Next, we will learn how a polar coordinate, polar coordinate integral look like. In polar integral, if you look on the left-hand side, it is given there double integral over the region r f of r of theta da what it means in polar integral a function is given to us in the form of r and theta and da is a small volume element or sorry da is a small area element of the given region please remember the value of da for cartesian system is dx dy or dy dx but in polar coordinates we will always take the value of da as r dr d theta so that's why I have replaced dA here with r dr d theta. f of r f theta are the, is a function of r and theta, which is depending on r and theta. Since in polar integral, r is our inner variable. So the limits of r may be constant, may be in the form of real numbers. But since theta is our outer variable, so limits of theta are always in the form of constant numbers, in the form of angle, radian angles. In the next step, after learning the basic integral, how a polar integral look like, which one is our inner variable, which one is our outer variable. Next, we will learn how we can evaluate the limits of R in general. To calculate the limits of R in a region, we will pass an arrow starting from origin and crossing the region. Like this, watch it again. The boundary or the point through which this arrows enter in our region will provide you the lower limit of R and the boundary or point through which this arrow exit will provide you the upper limit of R. Now, in order to calculate the limits of theta, we will measure the point or the boundary through which our region starts in the counterclockwise direction. So, in this second diagram, if we move in counterclockwise direction like this, then the starting point of our region is here. We will measure its angle with positive x-axis. If this angle is alpha, then it will provide us the lower limit of theta. Similarly, in counterclockwise direction, the ending point or the ending boundary is here. So we will measure this angle with positive x-axis. It will provide us the upper limit of theta. So after knowing these basic things, next we will learn something about equation of circle, which is important. This is the general equation of circle x minus a whole square plus y minus b whole square is equal to r square, where the center of circle is a, b and radius is r. Now, what will happen if we take a equal to 0, b equal to 0? The center of the circle will shift at origin, that is 0, 0. Then this equation number 1 reduces as x square plus y square is equal to r square. So equation number two is equation of circle whose center is at origin and radius is r. Now, if we solve this equation for x, then we have these two possibilities. x is equal to square root of r square minus y square. I have to call this equation number three or x is equal to minus square root of r square minus y square. I have called this equation number four. Similarly, if I solve this equation number 2 for y, then I have these two possibilities. y is equal to r square minus x square whole square root 
or y is equal to minus square root of r square minus x square whole square root. Then, since equation number two represents a complete circle, which part of the circle is, is represented by question, equation number three, four, five, and six? In the next slide, we will learn these things. Now, from here, Please pay attention. X is equal to minus square root of R square minus Y square is the part of the circle where the value of X is negative. Means it is a semicircle in the left half plane or it is a semicircle in second and third quadrant. Similarly, X is equal to R square minus Y square whole square root. Here X is positive. So it represents a semicircle in the right half plane or a semicircle whose center is at origin and it is present in the first and fourth quadrant. Next, y is equal to square root of r square minus x square will represent a semicircle in the upper half plane or a semicircle in first and second quadrant. Similarly, y is equal to minus r square minus x square square root will present a semicircle in the lower half plane or a semicircle in the third and fourth quadrant. After revising these things, now we are able that we can evaluate a polar integral. So for this purpose, we will learn question number 10, exercise 15.4 for Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. What is the requirement of the question? Change the Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral. And the statement of integral is limit from 0 to 1, limit from 0 to 1 minus y square square root x square plus y square dx dy. So in order to convert this integral into polar integral, first of all, we have to sketch the region. And for sketching of region, we need some boundaries. And boundaries are obtained from the limiting values of the variable. Here, the limits of y are 0 and 1. So y equal to 0 is equation of x axis y equal to 1 is equation of horizontal line. Now, x equal to 0 is equation of y axis and x is equal to 1 minus square root of y is equation of semicircle whose center is at origin and radius is 1. In the next step, we will plot this region. And here is our region. In this region, this is our x axis, y axis. Since x axis and y axis are involved in our boundaries, so I have made them dark. Then this is y equal to zero, a horizontal line means equation of x axis, y equal to one, a horizontal line, which passes the point where along the x axis where the value of y is one. And this is a semicircle whose radius is one and center is at origin. Please note that in this circle, the center of the circle and our origin is same. So the distance of the boundary from the center or from the origin is equal to the radius of circle, which is one. <clears throat> so, so along x axis, this semicircle cuts our x axis at a distance one. So this is a point one here. This is point one here along y axis and this point is minus one. Distance of the origin from this point is one. Its direction is negative. That's why it is written minus one here. So the common region is this portion in the first quadrant. In the next step, we will highlight it and then we will evaluate the limits. Now, in order to convert this Cartesian integral into polar integral here, first of all, we will replace x square plus y square by r square and dx dy with r dr d theta. And then we will calculate the limit. Why I have replaced x square plus y square? It is mentioned in the first slide that the value of x square plus y square is always equal to r square. And dx dy is equal to r dr d theta in polar coordinates. Next, in order to calculate the limits of r, I will pass an arrow starting from origin and crossing this region. Since in order to calculate the limits of r, we will measure distance of the boundaries from the origin. And in this case, our region is also included. Our region also includes the origin 
So the load limit is always equal to zero. Please remember this thing. Whenever your region includes the origin, load limit of R is always equal to zero. And for the upper limit of R, we will calculate the distance of the exiting boundary from the origin. So the distance of each point of the exiting boundary from the origin is equal to one because this is the boundary of the circle whose center is at origin and radius is one. So the limits of R here are zero to one. And in order to calculate the limits of theta, our region starts with positive x-axis in counterclockwise direction. So at this point, the angle of x-axis with itself is zero. So our starting angle is zero and our region ends along y-axis in the first quadrant. Along y-axis here, the angle is of 90 degree, which can be written as pi by two. So the limits of theta are zero to pi by two. In the next step, after converting this Cartesian integral into an equivalent polar integral, we can evaluate it. In order to evaluate this polar integral, we need to know these two formulas. The integral of x raised to power n dx is equal to x raised to power n plus one over n plus one plus c. And the integral of constant term is equal to k dx is equal to kx plus c. Now, in order to integrate it, first of all, we will simplify it. r square into r will be r cube. Applying first formula, the integration of r cube is r is to power 4 over 4 for the given limits. In the next step, applying fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit. 1 by 4 is constant, we can take it outside. And we are left with limit from 0 to pi by 2 d theta. Here the value of k is 1. So its integration will be theta only for the given limits, applying the limits, and then making the simplification. Our final answer is pi by 8. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share this content with your fellows. Allah Hafiz.